Alright everybody and welcome back to some more NJPW G1 tournament action. I'm gonna be doing the entire day three show this time around. And uh, if there's a lot of background noise I apologize for that but it, you know it's like a hundred degrees outside small window unit AC so I have to have the fans going. Alright, so it looks like we're starting off with some eight-man tag action. We got Kushida, David Finley right there, Juice Robinson, and Captain New Japan. And welcome anyone who is new to NJPW. If this is your first time uh, watching one of their shows, and if you happen to be using my commentary to enjoy the show a little bit better, hopefully you'll enjoy it better with some uh, English commentary you can understand. I'll be doing my best to uh, fill you in on some of the details here. So uh, Kushida right there, the one that just threw the dog tag out to the audience, he's the junior heavyweight champion. David Finley there in the black trunks, one of the Young Lions of NJPW. Young Lion program is their uh, developmental system. He's been in the program for a while, but still, uh, well, come to think of it, he is the only one left of the uh, bunch that were going through the program when I first started watching last year. They spend about a year and a half, two years in the program, and then uh, they graduate and get they go off someplace else. When uh, I first started watching, there were a couple of other uh, Japanese gentlemen. I forget their names right offhand. They've already uh, graduated and are, uh, I believe, both working in Mexico currently. And Jay White, a New Zealand wrestler, recently graduated. He's, I believe, working in Ring of Honor right now. It's, uh, of all the systems I've uh, seen in uh, pro wrestling, it's definitely uh, one of the best. So we got the other four guys coming out. There's Jushin Thunder Liger. Even if you're not familiar with Japanese wrestling, you should know Jushin Thunder Liger. There's Tiger Mask 4. both actually anime characters that were uh, made into pro wrestling personas. This is Nakanishi right there, the big dude in the black trunks, and Kojima, who for some reason the cameraman decided to show us underneath Juice Robinson's ass crack between his legs. That was some that was definitely an odd camera choice, camera shot choice. We're actually actually getting full camera coverage on this one. I was kind of expecting a fixed camera shot. Captain New Japan wants to start the match, but the other guys don't want to let him. Because... Even though the role of a young lion in one of these matches is pretty much to lose, with Captain New Japan in the match, it is not a given that he will be the one that loses. Captain New Japan probably has the worst win-loss record of any pro wrestler in history. But he's lovable. People like him. And in the end, that's really all that matters. Nice fast-paced action here to kick things off from Kushida and Tiger Mask. Now, these two, I believe, uh, fought over the, the junior heavyweight title recently, a couple, three months ago. I know Kushida had a match against uh, Jusha Thunderliger here, here in the ring with him now. Uh, I believe he had a mask against Tiger Mask as well. Maybe not. Maybe they're leading up to that match. 
Liger likes to use this Mexican surfboard stretch as a opening move. All around, it's a pretty good uh, move. It, you know, it, it's not really likely to get somebody to tap out, but it puts pressure on pretty much every part of their body while letting you just kind of hang out. Uh, Kushida just doing a little Rick Rude wiggle and goes into his finisher, the Kamura wrist lock. Excruciatingly painful wrist lock. I believe it's what's known as a double wrist lock because of the way the pressure is applied. It actually gets a pressure on the wrist in both a twisting and a leverage position is a you know a, a wrenching motion as well as twisting motion David Finley coming in son of Fit Finley you, you probably are familiar with and Captain New Japan tags himself in and immediately gets reversed on the other side of the ring. Quick tags with wrists or arm wrenches here. Big old Nakanishi going up top. Solid blow to the arm. Goes over. Shoves everybody else off the ring on the other side. There. Captain New Japan fighting back. But Nakanishi puts a stop to that rather quickly. <laughs> but gets taken down. This is why people like Captain New Japan. He doesn't win hardly ever. He loses almost every time he's in a match but he has that warrior spirit that never say die attitude and another Rick Rude wiggle with a big old punch I possibly need to look up and see if there's any particular reason why there's been so many wrestlers doing that recently because that's about the third time I've seen someone do it lately Nakanishi catches and slams. Big Ben knows how to put someone down. These two have kind of been having a little mini feud going on in these early tag team matches. Juice Robinson, I'm not sure if he would be characterized as a young lion. He's uh, a little bit too... Um, See, yeah, seasoned is a good word for it. But at the same time, he's new to the promotion and has been spending most of his time in these early tag team matches. But that's how New Japan likes to uh, keep people working. But uh, even when they're not able to have them in singles matches or they're not in title match scene for tag titles or something, they always try to keep everybody fresh and working by having them in these early tag team matches. Everybody gets a payday, everybody works. Keep the ring rust off. Robinson trying to take Nakanishi off the top. I don't think that's going to work out well for him. And it does not. Nakanishi probably going to hit a cross body here. And he does. Connect solidly. But showing serious signs of fatigue and has to roll out. David Finley going for the big splash but gets caught. Kojima lightning chops in the corner on David Finley. 
Will he ever stop? Yes, he is. But not before he smacks the crap out of the man's chest. Kojima, former world champ, part of the third generation of NJPW stars, getting up there in years now at this point, in his 40s, but still doing quite well. Currently one of the six-man never open weight tag title champs, along with Ricochet and Matt Seidel who I imagine have other en engagements currently one two only two count Captain New Japan breaks it up and misses the double clothesline Kushida in against the two veterans Gonna try and nail him in, does with a Tajiri off the ropes. Tajiri, one of his trainers. Nakanishi sends Kushida flying. Robinson and Finley back in. Gonna try to double suplex Nakanishi. Don't quite get him up. Looks like he's gonna send him flying with a double Northern Lights and does. Kojima calling for his big clothesline. Gets caught. Finley gets the roll up. Only a two count. Hits the uppercut. Takes the big clothesline. Standing position though. But gets the three count anyway. And the four vets pick up the win. I believe. Okay, so the next match ought to be pretty interesting from the look of it. It's going to be Shibata and Hanma taking on Nakajima and Yoshihashi. Quite interesting there because Hanma and Shibata went up against each other in the first round for the B block of the tournament in the last show, and Hanma won. The very uh, big story there for him. Hanma, two years of the G1 tournament, one win. This year he comes out and wins right out of the gate. And against Shibata, who he had just recently lost a match to for the uh, Never Open Weight singles title. Shibata coming to the ring with the title, retaining. Hanma putting up a big fight, but not quite able to take home the belt. Which is really the story of Hanma. But also why he's a fan favorite. He is an embodiment of everything that people love about Japanese pro wrestling, especially Japanese people themselves. The warrior spirit. If you're new to 
Japanese pro wrestling, New Japan in particular, it is really all about that warrior spirit, giving everything you've got in the ring. Winning's always good, but what they really, really love is somebody who's willing to go out there and just go until they have nothing left. Someone who has to really be beaten. Here we got Yoshihashi. Still really don't know why he has the cane. Or staff, whatever that's supposed to be. Doesn't really matter. And he is going to be partnering up with a wrestler from the promotion called Noah. Called uh, Nakajima. Yeah, Nakajima. And I am looking forward to the match that we're going to be seeing in the next round of the B Block, the next show, Shibata and Nakajima. I was expecting that match to be held off for a little while till later in the tournament, but it looks like they're going to use that as the main event for the next show. Good choice, actually. Because I'm sure there's quite a few people who are wanting to see that matchup because they do have a similar style. Lots of kicks. Smash mouth, mouth beat the crap out of you style. Didn't really see much of Nakajima in his first round match because he went up against Toru Yano who is a... kind of a rascally cheater style wrestler so... Not really going to see anyone with uh, their game going up against Toriano, which is why he does have success. Toriano makes you play his game, or he's going to we uh, he's going to weasel his way to a victory. Well, this guy seems very pleased about something. I'm uh, not exactly sure what he was smiling at, or who he was smiling at. Alright, here is Hanma. It'd be one hell of a story going through this tournament if he manages to get through it and uh, come out on top. He's actually uh, not had too bad of a year so far. Hanma, one of those wrestlers that doesn't win all that often a lot of the time. But as I said, people love him because he, every time he comes out to the ring, he gives that 110%. Always gives everything he's got and then some. Even if he tends to not win in the end because... Oh, uh, you might say that sometimes he's a little overzealous. Puts uh, a little bit too much much risk into his uh, attack, his offense. But, again, that's why people like him. He doesn't leave anything behind. He always goes until there's nothing left in the tank, and he makes the other guy beat him. But he beat Shibata who he is going to have to try and tag team with in this match, which <laughs> ought to be interesting. Shibata none too happy about losing that match, for more than one reason, I imagine. Shibata, one of those uh, wrestlers that comes across as a real asshole a lot of the times, but he's he's all about uh, being the biggest tough guy in the, the the in the ring, the biggest cock in the yard, if you will. So 
Looks like he might have a bit of a shoulder injury. Not good. Starting off a tournament with an injury. Don't want that to happen. And it starts already. Neither one wants to start on the apron. And Hanman makes it damn clear who's going to start this match. Yoshihashi is going to be going up against Hanma. Shibata will be going up against Nakajima in the next round. Little preview here. Doing a bit of choppity chop. Again, if you're new to NJPW, Japan wrestling, Japanese wrestling, especially here in NJPW, you're going to see a lot of this back and forth stuff. Like to see who's going to give in first. Not going to try and block the blow or necessarily escape from that sort of thing. Hanma got the better of it. Now he's going to go for his Kakeshi headbutt and missed as he usually will the first couple three times the headbutt taking its name from a I believe it's a wooden doll that are known for their tendency to just kind of fall over he does that kind of stiff drop with a headbutt so the Kakeshi And Yoshihashi and Nakajima taking things to the outside. Don't know much about Nakajima so far. As I said, going up against Toriano, not a good uh, match to showcase what he's got, what kind of style he uses. I know he uses a lot of kicks, that's about it. Yoshihashi bringing him in, so neither uh, partnership all that uh, stable it looks like. Nakajima an outsider, Yoshihashi a member of the Chaos stable. Nakajima running in with a big kick, again quite similar to what we'll be seeing from Shibata, so looking forward to seeing how those two handle each other. Hanma with some stiff elbows right there, but eats a big kick. One, only one count. Laying in some stiff kicks there. Really should stay on top of him though. Ooh, spinal tap. And another. And another. And another. One, two, two count only. And if you know that by another name or by no name at all, it's just a stiff kick to the back. Usually right after a snapmare takeover. Another knife edge chop there, a little elbow to the back of the head. Looks like they're trying to focus on Hanma. Hanma, very strong man, not gonna get the better of him in a contest of who can suplex who, as Yoshihashi just found out.
Yoshi had Hanma and Shibata jaw jacking. Hanma eats a kick for that. Shibata kicking the crap out of everybody. And a stiff ass drop kicks in the corner. Makes my face hurt every time he does it. Head arm suplex takes Yoshiashi over. One, two, only to count. Gonna go for a chin lock there. No. Abdominal stretch. Old school abdominal stretch there. Nakajima comes in. And now we're going to see who can out-tough who. Nope, the ref's making Nakajima leave. Shibata going to have a, the final word in that, it looks like. Bulldog. And hits the Kakeshi. If you uh, get a chance to listen to Hanma talk, quite an interesting experience. He actually has had his, uh, it, in the past, his larynx, what larynx was uh, crushed, so he sounds like somebody gargling asphalt when he talks. Shibata with another big kick in the corner. Actually going to get some double team action here. But Yoshihashi... <laughs> Blocks him once. Takes the headbutt. One, two. Nakajima breaks it up. You got to give that to Shibata. He kind of holds grudges, but at the same time, he wants to win the match. Nakajima going for the penalty kick, which is actually the Shibata's uh, finisher. Roll up, two, and three. Yoshihashi gets the p sneaky win. This kind of came out of nowhere. Okay, cameraman, I know there's something... Shibata and Hanma... Quite literally butting heads. And now Yoshihashi and Nakajima gonna assert dominance here. Some uh, words have been had. And Shibata just walking away. But that's Shibata for you. Not much of a talker. He prefers to talk with his feet, usually. If he's not happy with you, he tends to let you know in a very definitive and close and up, per, uh, up close and personal fashion. by kicking you in the head. Alright, so we got Takahashi and Kenny Omega. On one side, going up against Toriano and Ghetto, I believe. They need to update their pictures. Ghetto these days is sporting a quite a big bushy beard.
Yeah, he likes to wear the the do rag. And he wears the damn thing to where it covers up his eyes and entire top half of his head, so you can't always tell it's him. Except that he's the one, about the only one that wears the damn thing. Kenny Omega, leader of the Bullet Club. Takahashi was in the G1 tournament last year. This year, just kind of playing backup boy. And I have the volume turned down on this, so I do not know what he was saying. Knowing Omega, it was probably something kind of funny. See, I like Kenny Omega when he's just having a match. Then uh, he... I'm not a fan of the cool heel gimmick, the, you know, uh, wrestlers or even entire groups that they don't know whether they want to be heel or babyface, and they do both sides of it. Like, I don't mind an anti-hero type, but... Sometimes he just cheats for the sake of cheating, it seems like, which... For no particular reason other than he's cheating. The, like... Pick a side of the fence, dude. Are you wanting the crowd to cheer for you, or are you wanting them to boo you? I think what really irritates me is that there's no reason for it. He's perfectly capable of winning a match without cheating at all. And here comes Toriano and Gato. Who both cheat all the damn time, but they do it with style, and it's something that they've incorporated into how they do their matches. So it works for them. I know I'm stepping outside of KFAB there, but it's just one of my little pro wrestling bugbears, I guess. If you're going to cheat, do it with style. Have a reason for doing it. Don't just do it to do it. Toriano with his DVD and looks like he's pimping a new shirt there. Omega showing off a t-shirt for the tag team, the junior heavyweight tag team for Bullet Club, the Young Bucks. Not a fan of them personally. All flash, no substance would be my take on the Young Bucks. It uh, looks like we're going to be getting uh, Omega and Toriano. That's probably going to be amusing when they go up against each other. But we're going to get a bit of a preview here. Toriano, I mentioned earlier, cheats all the damn time, kind of a cheeky rascal. And likes to play head games, <laughs> as we can see. Actually can uh, wrestle reasonably well, does not only cheat, but does like to screw with people. Looks like uh, he's already getting under Omega's skin quite easily there. Gato coming in. Continues the arm wrench. Omega going to the beard. That's just not nice. 
Takahashi. We got a uh, Gato is a junior heavyweight, so we got two heavyweights and a heavyweight and a junior heavyweight here. Uh, understandable though, most of the other members of Chaos, Toriano and Gato are also members of the Chaos faction. We've already seen Yoshihashi, so the only other members, uh, for the most part, are going to be in tournament matches. <laughs> Ghetto with a little drop toe hold to the balls. <laughs> Have you ever seen Japanese wrestling in the past? Oh! Omega getting a little bit of revenge there. Although he wasn't the one that took the crotch shot, so... Takahashi did, and he's getting a little bit of revenge of his own on the other side. Ouch. Uh, as I was saying, uh, if you've ever watched Japanese pro wrestling from any promotion, one time or another, you've probably seen Gato as part of the tag team with uh, Jado. Gato and Jado. Actually, have been in, in uh, pro wrestling since the 80s. I don't know whether it's the diet, the water they drink, I don't know what it is about Japanese pro wrestlers, but they certainly know how to keep going. Jushin Thunder Liger, who we saw earlier, is actually already in his 50s, and... Maybe not as spry as he used to be, but certainly can still go. Recently, there was a junior heavyweight tournament. He was in the tournament, didn't do too badly. Two, only two count there. I. Uh, Mega had the boot up, but he also had the broom there, but I think he had the bristles up, so I'm not quite sure what was going on there. And another Rick Rude Wiggle. And this is what I was talking about, just choking with a shirt, absolutely no real reason for it, just doing it to do it. No real style, no rhyme or reason, just doing it to do it. I don't know. Ghetto certainly out of it at the moment. apologize probably desynced a little bit there I had to stop and sponge out the AC unit because it gets a lot of moisture water in it uh, the with you know really hot days and a high humidity it fills up with water and doesn't drain out fast enough it starts draining inside and that makes a mess so sorry about that so right now Gato has just smacked Kenny Omega's, well, he just uh, dropped toe hold him right into Ta uh, Takahashi. Now he's trying to get to his corner to tag in Toriano. Tag. There's your sink point. Toriano going right to the turnbuckle cover. Omega coming in and nails himself into the corner. 
want to and Yano knows when people are coming after him faking him out They could make for an interesting match with uh, Omega's cheating and Toriano's cheating. Let's see who can out-cheat the other, I suppose. And Toriano goes to the hair on both of them. Gato back in. I don't I guess I don't really know precisely what the difference is when it comes to Gato and Toriano both being kind of cheaters at times. Big uppercut there. I guess it's just the, they do it with a certain style. They do it with a a bit of a two only two count. Long two count. Just something about the way they do it and when the guys from Bullet Club do it it just feels more like I said more like they're doing it just to do it. Whereas Toriano and Gato, they incorporate it into their style of how they do a match. More. It's just... There's just some subtlety that's missing from the Bullet Club, I guess. Little trip there. And Toriano trips on the other side. And a double trip. Low kick and a package and only two count. Small package there. And he's trying to do it again, but Takahashi Fisherman's Buster. One, two, a long two count. Big clothesline from Takahashi on a Gato. Short DDT. A one and a two and three. Finishes him with the short DDT. That is, I said, Takahashi is a heavyweight Gato a light or a junior heavyweight. That makes a difference. I suppose part of the reason I don't care for the Bullet Club's antics is that they remind me, well, they're not just remind me, they're doing NWO crap, and I never liked the NWO in the WCW days. It's just you knew what every match they were in was going to be like. Every single match. If there was a match at all, it was inevitably going to end up with the NWO guys smashing whoever was in the ring with them with gang banging and not just cheating it was it was just got really old really fast for me cuz I'm a ring action guy that's what I like about Japanese wrestling and it always irritates me with uh, guys like Kenny Omega that they don't need to cheat at all and then they start doing it, and there's no real reason for them to do it. They just do it for no reason. Like, I, you know, repeating myself there. But like I said, it's one of my bugbears. Can't help it. And like I said, Gato and Toriano both cheat all the damn time, but then they, they do it with style, and it's part of the persona that they've 
cultivated and just the way they do things. There's just, there's some distinction, some subtlety and style. There's just something different about the two things. And I'm not 100% sure on what the difference is, but there is one. Perhaps part of it is that Omega isn't consistent about cheating. Sometimes he'll go an entire match and not cheat once. Sometimes he cheats all the time. If he's in with the Young Bucks, they cheat all the goddamn time. There's no consistency to it, so that's part of it. Alright, next match. Get off that topic. topic. Evil. With his finger lasers and scythe. Which I've always felt is a bit much. The finger lasers are kind of cool. The outfit's not bad, but the, the scythe is a bit much. Little on the nose. Actually, I'm not sure that's even the right phrase. I'm not sure there's a phrase for it, other than over the top and corny. Perhaps wandering into hokey territory. Got some Los Ingobernables fans out there. A lot of them. Evil part of the Los Ingobernables faction. Along with Bushi, sporting what appears to be a highly stylized version of a shark boy mask. And the leader of the group, Naito, who actually lost his first round match in the B block. Considering that he just recently lost the heavyweight title, that could be quite a blow to the confidence. Then, with Naito, you never know if he even gives a damn about what's going on. Messing with a camera crew. Los Ingobernables is another group, kind of like the Bullet Club, not all that consistent. Sometimes they cheat, sometimes they don't. Bushi, the one most likely to cheat, I have to say. Naito going to screw with the commentary guy again. Maybe a little bit here. here for a while, it was kind of a running thing between Naito and... The commentary guy there that's kind of leaning away from him, the one in the black shirt. Naito was always wanting him to hold the ropes for him, let him in the ring. Looks like they've kind of gotten past that, perhaps. No, he's going to have one of the new young lions do it. Take his sweet time and always well, likes to mess with people. This Bushi likes to wear two masks out to the ring. A mask over his mask. Do not know why. He has quite a collection of them, I have to say. He goes traveling, he probably has to have a suitcase just for his masks. Maybe two. <laughs> one for the mask he wears in the ring, and one for the mask he wears over his mask that he wears in the ring. Naito likes to take his sweet time. 
All right, here comes the competition. We got Taguchi up front with his funny glasses and red shirt. There is a Nagata, Yuji Nagata, another third generation wrestler from, well, third generation NJPW star. I don't think he's actually a third generation wrestler, but part of the third generation of stars in NJPW. Kind of a odd thing there, but uh, NJPW has actually been around since I believe it's the 70s. So they do have quite a legacy. And because of the Young Lion program, you know, they're trained by the previous generation of stars, so every time they're the new up and comers. You know, they finish up the Young Lion program, they go off and do their run someplace else, Mexico or somewhere in the here in the States, to get a little bit of journeyman experience, and then they come back and... Naito fucking with Michael Elgin there. Check the lineup, and yep. Toriano and Omega, Michael Elgin and Naito, Nagata and Evil, Hanma and Yoshihashi, Shibata and Nakajima. Will be the lineup for the next show. Naito actually going to start things off. Elgin quite happy to start on his side. Did not see these two last year, and I do not think we've seen this matchup at all yet. Uh, felt going into the tournament when I saw the two different blocks that a lot of the interesting stories were going to be out of the B block. There's going to be some interesting stuff from the A block as well, but I'm going to be seeing some interesting stuff. Naito playing his head games. He likes to take his time, cool and easy, until he's ready to pick his spot. And of course, Evil is going to help him pick his spot. Uh oh. Big Mike gonna take him over. He is more than capable of doing it. And yes he did. Double suplex. And Bushi gets caught. Just carrying him around like a doll. Gut ridge slam. Keeps it locked in. Another gut wrench, gut wrench suplex, slam, and going to do it again. Bushi, another junior heavyweight, that time releases it, sends him flying, catches Naito. Now just forearming the hell out of everybody. Little double team action there. Naito and Evil participated in a tag team tournament a few months ago. Did pretty well. Naito going after Elgin's leg. Not a bad strategy. Elgin very much a power wrestler. Naito more of a fast wrestler. A little bit of a, a mixed style that he uses. Quite a few kicks, drop kicks, fast pace moves. Evil on the outside going after Nagata, who is the one that defeated Naito. Of 
Perhaps looking for a little revenge. Bushi getting in a drop kick and a little nod to Booker T with the spin -a rooney And now with the blatant choking of the with the t-shirt. And again, as I said, that's uh, I don't know what happened out here. Looks like he might have fallen off his chair. But, uh, again, uh, just that sort of cheating, just not a fan of it. Naito likes to do this, sweep the leg, gets the drop kick in the corner. And just gonna chill out for a second. Which gives Elgin a little bit of a chance to catch his breath there. I'm gonna go back to the leg. As I was saying, uh, going after the legs of Elgin, not a bad idea. Now he's not one of those uh, stereotypical muscle guys with the tiny ass legs and the huge upper body. He's definitely uh, well rounded in his workouts. Naito going for the Tornado DDT. Elgin stops him. Catches him in a bit of a cradle there. Up into a Falcon Zero. But he is suffering a bit on that leg. To finish what I've been trying to say is like any power wrestler, he has to use those legs to get guys up to hit those suplexes and other slams and all the moves that he likes to use to punish guys. So you take the leg out, makes it a lot harder for him to pull off his offense. They got it in with evil. Nailing him with those big kicks. As I said, was saying, uh, Nagata, one of the the older stars of the company. But having some damn good matches. People have said that he's been having better matches in the last few years than he had in his earlier career. And kind of to go back to what I was saying before, I don't know what it is about Japanese wrestlers, but they know how to keep themselves in good shape. Very active and, uh, you know, they, they don't slow down. <laughs> Probably because they don't use as much of the high-risk stuff and do a lot of moves that tend to cause long-lasting injuries. Probably a lot of it. See a lot more classic pro wrestling from these guys and a lot of it could be that nice exploder suplex there from Nagata onto evil but uh, since martial arts is such a big part of Japanese culture I believe judo is one of the top sports in the country and is something that is they, uh, they it's something they do in school even perhaps there's just something about uh, those uh, you know that sort of a workout that helps them stay in good shape get in good shape even when they're young Taguchi with his buttocks based offense Springboard and a butt bump. One, two, and a two on two count on light. And a little bit of fun at the expense of Nakamura, who was poached at the beginning of the year by the Un American company, who I will not name. A little bit of free-for-all going on here. And Taguchi gets the ass-based offense going once again. Hits the big hip thrust. One, two, only two count. 
In these tag matches, Taguchi tends to serve more of a comedic role. Actually, quite damn good when he has a match. Singles match or is just allowed to go. Another tournament they had. Let's see, one, two. No, it's a two count only. Couldn't tell if that was a count the first time or not. It's only two count. But they do quite a few tournaments in Japan, and one, two, and three. Taguchi goes down to Evil's finisher there. It's a front sweep. It's an STO. Step over toe hold. Slam Naito. Attacking Elgin's leg there. Does not want to release it. Trying to cause some damage before their match. And Evil going after Nagata. Post match. Elgin trying to get him some, but Bushi breaking it up before he can. Well, they're just scrapping around here. Evil forgets that they're supposed to raise hands at that point. Posing for the camera. <laughs> yes. Everybody's pissed off. <laughs> and Los Angobernables, the ungovernables, showing their rebellious nature by having a show of solidarity in the ring. bit of posing going on here. I think we're going to go into the intermission at this point. I believe that's the last of the opening matches. After the intermission we'll be getting into the tournament matches. I'll take this opportunity now 
I invite you to come to my website acidbathproductions.biz or to come check me out on YouTube if you're watching this someplace else. You can find me on YouTube under uh, Ryan Acidheads Murphy. A-C-I-D-H-E-D-Z. It's my music producer name. And I also use it for things like game production and other stuff I do. Alright. So I'm going to be uh, jumping ahead to the tournament matches and I'll be right back with you when those kick off. Alright, we're back for the tournament matches. We're starting off with Tinzon going up against Tomatonga. Tinzon had one hell of an opening match for the tournament. One going up against Dishi. Tomatonga, kind of a disappointing opening match for him and everyone else, I think. Went up against uh, Togi Makabe. Was not a very good match. Kind of lackluster. Tomatonga lost. So definitely not what he was looking for. And I do not get the pants. I suppose that's supposed to look like chaps, but it just looks weird. He's got money on his pants this time. Always has cool face paint, though. Tomatonga, son of Haku, a.k.a. Ming. Member of Bullet Club, if you didn't catch the Bullet Club logo on his video thing there. was interested to see how he would do in this tournament. He's primarily a tag team wrestler. Last year when I first started watching, he was basically a backup guy for the Bullet Club. He's moved uh, into a more prominent position with a loss of three members of the Bullet Club due to the aforementioned poaching by that one American company that I'm not going to name. Held the heavyweight tag titles for a while with his brother, Tongaroa. Haven't seen him for a little while. I'm not sure what happened to him. And here comes Tenzan. Along with his often tag team partner, Kojima. who we saw earlier on. Kojima, as I said, won the six-man tag titles. Had a spot in this tournament, but gave it to his friend Tenzon. Tenzon, another one of the older wrestlers, one of the veterans. This might be his last year to compete in the tournament. Last opportunity to compete in the tournament. So be interesting to see how well he does. Since uh, that poaching occurred, all the veterans have uh, really been stepping up their game, so been seeing a lot more out of them the last few months. Good to see. It's always kind of amusing to see the veterans show them whippersnappers what's what. Yeah. <laughs> Tomatonga gonna do a little bit of an ambush there, see if he can get, to, uh, get an advantage. We'll see if he can uh, kind of step out of that tag team wrestling shell he's been in for quite some time, see how he does as a singles competitor. As I said, lackluster 
beginning to the tournament. Have to see how he does in this one. Taunting Tenzon with his own move here, the Mongolian chop. But takes a nice big headbutt to the gut and Mongolian chop. Mongolian chop. Tenzan, Mongolian chop. <laughs> Not sure if he originated the move, but he certainly has gotten a lot of play out of it. <laughs> Big head butt. Big shoulder block. I think uh, the the way Tomatonga is going to want to work this match if he's got his head on straight is he likes to utilize a lot of movement sneak around try and outmaneuver his opponent fake him out he's gonna have to use that Tenzan definitely has knee trouble kind of a stiff movement to him not all that fast if uh, Tomatonga wants to try and win here he's gonna have to use his maneuverability because he's not going to out tough out power or frankly out mean Tenzan although he's trying to prove me wrong right now on the outside Head into the turnbuckle post there. And nails him again. Might be looking for a count out win here. Because he can get a win on the count out. But Tenzan's back in the ring. Now again, if you're not familiar with the style of this sort of tournament, it is a round robin tournament. Two blocks of ten. Everyone goes up against everyone in their block once. So everybody has nine matches total. Tomatonga using the headbutt to the gut this time. A little bit of wasting time there. Does not want to give Tenzon a chance to recover. That's a mistake. short shoulder blocks in the corner forearm whip to the other side Tonga gonna go for the big splash probably and misses Tenzan hitting the chops Big headbutt. Big clothesline. Takes Tomatonga down to the floor, down to the mat, I should say. And getting him going for a suplex. Yep. Classic old school suplex. Short two count. That's sticking the boots, Tomatonga there. A little bit exchange of the forearms. It's not really the kind of battle that Tomatonga wants to get into there. 
even with that flurry. I see, this is what I was talking about, using that maneuverability. Keeping tens on off his game. Has him in a headlock there. Twisty neck breaker. Only a two count. Clubbing blows. Reversal on the whip. Ooh. Tomatonga landed a bit rough there on the... It's kind of a release. Draw, Samoan drop. Reminiscent of uh, the Samoan drop that the Rock would do. Gonna go for a... Uh, Backdrop there, a Noki backdrop, I believe it's called. Denzon going up. Tomatonga gonna get up. Denzon going for the headbutt. Tomatonga rolls out of the way. Tonga trying to go for the cutter. Tenzon misses the wheel kick. Uh, look to be a spear. One, two, only two count. Definitely a better match than his first one. Is he going to be able to put Tenzon away? He's in control here. Got him. Rolling neck breaker assisted by the rope. One, two, only two count. Tenzon looking to prove that he still has it in him to win a tournament, win the tournament. Tamatanga, a lot to prove. Wants to prove that he has it in him to win a tournament. Tenzon has won this tournament before in the past. But uh, as I said, getting up there in years at this point in his career. Tomatonga, up and coming, youngster. Both men with a lot to prove. Kind of different ends of the scale, though. Both men just kind of crashed into each other there. I'm not really sure who got the better of that. Like, Tenzon caught Tamatanga in the midsection. But Tonga still might have nailed him, but currently Tenzon has him in his Anaconda Vice. Anaconda Vice. He's going to look to slam him. Tonga trying to fight out of it. Got him, big, big slam there. One, two, two count only. Tenzon may be calling for clothesline and hits it. Maybe he's going to look for the moonsault. Uh, possibly the fire thunder. Nope. Slam. Now he's going to look for that moonsault. Salt. 
And hits it. Two, three. Tins on wins. And he still has it, folks. As the saying goes, it's hard to keep a good man down and tins on one of the best. Got my notebook out so I can keep track of who's won and how what matches they've won. Definitely been some interesting uh, turn out uh, turn of events of uh, the A block as well. Uh, I said earlier I thought the B block was going to be the one with the most interesting stories coming out of the tournament because. Uh, probably the big biggest story of all of the tournament is going to be Naito, the leader of Los Angobernables, going head-to-head -head with uh, Kenny Omega, leader of the Bullet Club, which those two factions have not dealt with each other really at this point, so seeing those two go head-to-head -head is going to be one of the, the big what's going to happen moments of the tournament. There's already been some interesting developments here in the A block. We got uh, Ishii and Goto coming up next, both members of Chaos. But uh, don't expect them to go light on each other at all. Ishii very much one of the tough guy wrestlers of the promotion. I like Goto. Goto, uh, my feeling about him is that he's still missing something. I'm not sure what, though. I think he needs some sort of uh, cohesive element to tie everything he does together. It's There's just something missing. but still absolutely impeccable ring work. Also, uh, the point being that he's also one of the tougher guys. So, uh, <clears throat> sorry, throat got a little dry there. Uh, these, yeah, these two are not going to go easy on each other just because they're in the same faction. They're going to go in there and um, see who's going to come out on top tonight. Ishii lost in his first match against Tenzan. Goto won his first match against Tamatanga. So currently Tamatanga is sitting at 0-2. Ishii uh, Tenzan at 2-0. Ishii 0-1. Goto 1-0. So I'm going to have to see if they can uh, tie th if Ishii can tie things up here so far in the tournament. Here he comes. 
the stone pit bull. Real Smash Mouth style. Had some real wars with Togi Makabe, Shibata. Yep. These two not gonna go on e not gonna go easy on each other at all. There's absolutely no quarter given. And right out of the gate, clotheslining each other, neither man giving an inch. Trading forearms, see who gives first here. And honestly, some guys I'd say uh, this would be a bad idea to do this against Ishii. Goto, I think, is every bit as capable of taking it as Ishii is. And he does seem to get the better of it. Well, maybe not. Goto, first one to eat a big move here. Nice power slam, by the way. Ishii tends to put a little bit of torque on just about everything he does. Likes to try and drop people on their heads. Shaded trading slaps, chops. And Ishii sometimes goes high and hits the throat like he did right there. Like I said, no quarter given. Ishii does not want to go two in a row losing. Goto doesn't want to lose his momentum. Big clothesline, but Goto does not go down. Form and the hell out of Ishii in the corner. I'm gonna follow up. Another big clothesline, but Ishii does not give it in. And Ishii showing how he got that uh, name, the Stone Pitbull. Ate all those forearms, dropped Goto with one of his own. Another big double clothesline. Spin kick in the corner. Connects. Goto gonna go up. Looking to hit an elbow there. Hits it. One, two, two count only. Might be the best strategy for Goto there. Maybe uh, avoid a little bit of the just beating the crap out of each other and try to keep uh, Ishii off his feet there. Big headbutt. Stiff headbutt. Running the ropes here. See who's going to connect first. Oh, they just kind of crashed into each other. I'm not sure exactly what happened. Ishii's right back up. This has uh, come back to bite Ishii in the ass before. Pushing himself to the point that eventually he just gives out. Uh, 
Again, maybe not the best strategy. Only the second round in the tournament. You push yourself too hard, you burn yourself out, you got nothing left for the rest of the tournament. Still has seven matches to go. Going up, looking for Superplex, maybe. Probably. Goto fighting. Is she gonna get him up? And yes, he does. Puts a stall on it, making him think about it. And picture perfect Superplex. One, two, two count only. See, at this point, Goto's eating a bit more offense. Ishii not wanting to stay down. Keeps popping back up. Taking quite a few stiff hits himself, though. He said he could come back and bite him in the ass. If he pushes himself too hard too early, doesn't give him himself a chance to recuperate. Checks the arm, gets caught. Goto drops the head to the back, the back of the head to the knee. He has been incorporating a lot of uh, moves that involve forcibly uh, making his opponent's head come into contact with his knee with prejudice. <laughs> Another double clothesline. Ishii with a machine gun forearms there. A big discus clothesline from Goto. Ishii starting to show signs of fatigue. He's not getting up right away anymore. Goto gonna go for a, another one of those moves. He likes to do a Death Valley driver onto his knee. Big headbutt, but catches Ishii. He checks the arm again. Goto catches him. DVD to the knee. One, two, only a two count. Goto back to his feet. Ishii definitely suffering at this point. Big kick. One, two, only two count. See, this is what I was talking about. Is Ishii. Gassed himself out here. Nails the headbutt. But definitely fatigued. Goto a little dazed and confused. Ishii trying to capitalize. Is he going to be able to? Looking for a power bomb. Big power bomb with a pin. One, two, only two count. Ishii looking a little bit more lively. Goto definitely stunned. Looks like he might be calling for the big clothesline. Likes to hit a clothesline with his opponent uh, kind of on their knees or sitting. Goto very slow to get up here. Maybe trying to fake Ishii out. Ishii hits the 
massive clothesline there. One, only a one count. Goto kicks right out. Ishii calling for something. Possibly the brain buster. Goto floats over. Catches him in a sleeper. He's got it hooked in pretty deep. Taking Ishii down to the mat. Roll up. Whoa. A running clothesline to the back of his head. I don't think I've ever seen him do that before. That would hurt. Gonna go for the one to the front now. Goto rises up and Close lines him right back. Both men giving everything they've got here. And this one, this could go either way. Huge clothesline from Goto. Ishii kicks right out. Goto looking for that finisher. Ishii catches him. Goto hits the headbutt. Bit of maneuvering there. Goto gets the better of it. Front headlock. Ishii gets him, trying to get him up. Fighting to see who's going to be able to pull something off here. Oh! Ow. And that's what he's been using as a finisher, and... Uh, rather, that's the move he's been using as a finisher. Variant to start with, and a three. Goto gets the win. So that's 2-0 for Goto and 0-2 for Ishii. And I was talking about how Goto, I thought, needed a uh, some element to kind of tie his overall style together. I think he's found it. Saw some new variations of moves uh, nailing his opponent's head onto his knee. So, looks like he's going to be trying to build his overall style around that concept. And as we watch him leave the ring, can kind of go over the point system a little bit, I guess. Every win you get is two points, a loss is no points, a tie or draw is one point each. If you have the same number of points as someone else at the end of a, the, the block, the rounds for the block, whoever won between the two of you or the two wrestlers I should say gets the win so for example if 
Goto and Ishii end up with the same points at the end of the tournament for their end of the rounds for their block. Goto would actually get the win for the block because he beat Ishii in their match. All right, so coming out now, we've got B Bad Luck Fale, the underboss, the enforcer for the Bullet Club. Big man wrestler. But quite capable in the ring. No, not the stereotypical big man wrestler. And that he actually can have a decent match. If memory serves as cousin to Tamatanga and Tangaroa, part of that same family, has a problem with the announcer guy for some reason. Thank you, camera guy. I like having that light shining right in my eyes. Alright, and we've got another wrestler from the promotion Noah coming out here, Marafuji. Part of the Tag Team Champions with Toriano. Of Noah. Toriano is an NJPW wrestler, but NJPW and NOAA are affiliated with each other. They sometimes do cross-promotional stuff. They had wrestlers go to NOAA for... I believe they had a tag team tournament there. So now they've got a couple of guys from NOAA coming to NJPW for the G1 tournament. Marafuji defeated Okada, the NJPW Heavyweight Champion, in their match. They started off the tournament against each other, and Marafuji came out on top. Definitely one of the big stories of the A Block. That uh, Tanahashi, who will be seen up next probably, also lost his match, one of the biggest names in NJPW, along with the current world champ, one of the other biggest names in NJPW, both lost their first matches in the tournament. Very interesting development. Tag team match in the last show, Marafuji seem to have a difficult time figuring out what to do with Bad Luck Folly. Really lays in with those chops. Fale just nailing the dude upside the head. Well, I have the test to see who can be tough here. And you really see right there just how hard that guy is hitting with those chops. Fale's chest already blistering. Neither one given way yet. Fale definitely showing some uh, 
Signs of discomfort, though. <laughs> Fowley goes off his feet. Briefly. Marafuji. Goes up. Fowley goes down. And if you've never seen Bad Luck Fowley before, you're probably seeing what I mean by him actually being able to have a decent match. He can actually move around. <laughs> See a lot of big man wrestlers that 80% of the matches, the smaller guy just trying to get them off their feet. Fale, you actually get a match. Big elbow in the corner. Body check just sends Marafuji flying. Fale, a rugby player before becoming a pro wrestler. And sends Marafuji into the guardrail. Hard. Uh, talking to the ref. This is going to send him in there again. And really threw himself into that. Or rather, I should say, he used his body weight to throw Marafuji into that. Double choke lift. And just threw him right into the post. Damn. Folly not messing around. Huge backdrop. Two, only two count. Follow a pretty dominant so far in this match. As I said, uh, Marafuji may not know how to deal with a big man. almost a situation where you might want to just go ahead and eat the loss knowing full well that you've got another seven matches to go and one loss really is not going to hurt you too much and you're far less likely to get injured and of course these guys have that pride, that warrior spirit, they're not going to want to do that, they're not going to want to take that easy uh, night off, as it were. So, win or lose, Marafuji is going to get in there and get his ass kicked. And, happily, get his ass kicked. Managing to get some uh, offense in there. Using some kicks. Drop kicks. Now this is a mistake. Yeah, not likely to happen. Gets over him. Another kick there. Folly stops him. Looking. Not sure what he was looking for, but Marafuji manages to get him and snap him over with a suplex. Snap suplex. Using Folly's position to get him over. Yeah, just kind of stomped him into the mat there. Hard side kick. Uh, Folly threw him off. 
like he may have nailed the ref there. Red shoes. There, Fuji slicing him up. Big kick. Calling for a finish. Fale just threw him right off. But eat some more kicks. Big spin kick there. Mirafuji definitely with those uh, educated feet. Looking for that finisher again. Fale throws him off once more. Big clothesline sends Mirafuji flying. problem with going up against somebody like Bad Luck Fale, it only takes one move to completely stop any momentum you've built. Marifuji managing to hold his own with those kicks. Fale has not had much of an answer for those. Not really anyone in New Japan that utilizes quite that variety of kicks from that many positions. So, not something that Folly's used to dealing with. Takes another one right there. Fuji going for it a third time. Folly catches him, sits him up. Going to go for the bad luck fall here. And as always, first kick only side swipes him, but that knee definitely hit the mark. Gets caught. Goes for the spike, but gets kicked for it. Woo! And bad luck, Fale. Reasserts. One, two. Oh, long two count. Only a two count, though. It's the big spike. One, two, and three. Marifuji goes down. Folly gets the win. Definitely interesting. Fale does tends to do pretty well in these tournaments. Did pretty damn well last year too. So Marafuji beat Okada in their match, but lost to Bad Luck Fale. Not that it was an easy victory by any stretch. Marafuji had him on the ropes more than once. And that huge ass bruise on Fale's chest is going to be following him around for a few days, no doubt. Marafuji likes to lay in those chops hard. Look at that bruise of blisters on his chest right there. Ouch.
I may have mixed up some of the matches from the first round earlier. It was Goto beat Bad Luck Fale, Tenzan beat Ishii, Togi Makabe beat Tamatanga, Marafuji defeated Okada, and Tanahashi lost to Sonata. Right now we're seeing Sonata come out. And I really don't get this dude too much at the at the moment at yet. Maybe he just needs to grow on me a little more, I don't know. He's pretty new. At least in JP in JPW. Another member of Los Ingobernables. He's going to be going up against Okada. And not really looking forward to this match a whole lot. Because we just saw these two go up against each other not that long ago. But it will be interesting to see what happens here. Okada was a world champ, went up against Naito for the world title. Sonata debuted that night, helped Naito defeat Okada for the title. Okada feuded with Sonata for a short time. Ended up the victor, Okada did. So it'll be interesting to see if uh, Sonata can get a victory here, which would actually put the the heavyweight champ at zero and two. Alright, so here's Okada, world champ, the Rainmaker. Nickname and the name of his finisher. Lots of bling. Shiny coat. I feel sorry for whoever had to sew all the sequins onto that thing. I said not really looking forward to this match a whole lot because we've seen it not that the, these two go up against each other not that long ago but it, after Okada lost his first match of the tournament definitely going to be interesting to see if Sonata can make that a 0-2 and two situation go 2-0 and oh himself Tie up into the ropes. I'm gonna see a clean break. Okada likes to fake him out and Yep. Headlock there. Throw it off, throw it off. Go 
going for the Rainmaker. What Sonata going for is reverse guillotine. Now they're out on the floor. Let's see what they're going to do out here. Into the guardrail. Ooh. Nailing him with a chair there. Red Shoes trying to get him back in the ring. It's not a... Dropping Okada down onto the guardrail again. Choking him here with a power cord. Or media cord. I'm not sure what kind of cord it is. A cord. They have no accord. He's choking him with one. Sonata stand on top of Okada on this so far. Okada coming off a loss. That could have shaken him a little bit. Yeah. That's uh, not really something you want to have happen, being the world champ and losing the first match. Getting a little fired up here, though. That's not a stops him. Ooh! Okada avoids Moonsault, but Sonata sees it. Turns it into a drop kick. Nice. High backdrop there. One, two, only two count. See, uh, Sonata's playing this smart. Uh, he's getting a lot of effect for very little exertion. Kata, desperation. Hits a big backdrop there. Shoves him way up in the air. Kata managing to get back into control. DDT and the kip up. Probably looking for running uppercut there. Hits it. One, two, only two count. 
Of course, being the world champ, you can never count Okada out. He can take a lot of punishment, and he has a definite never-say-die attitude. Looking for one of his favorite uh, signature softening up moves there. Doesn't get it. Sonata, double leap frog, hits drop kick. Sendo kind of flying to the outside. Go over. Nails him. <laughs> Sonata back in control. But messing around here. Not really what you want to do. You don't want to give a world champ time to recover. Of course, he is giving himself a chance to recuperate a little bit here, too. Sizing him up. Doesn't hit what he was thinking of, but... Tries to make something happen anyway. Okada hits him with a flapjack. Catches him, gets him onto the knee, and bam. Probably looking for the big flying elbow here. And nails it. I'm gonna call for the Rainmaker and Rainmaker. This is a he catches the arm, spins him around, hits a short arm clothesline. That's the rainmaker. Sonata gets out. It's in Zaguri. Okada goes for his big drop kick. He goes with the two awesome drop kick. He misses. Sonata going for that reverse guillotine gets arm dragged there full Nelson what's he looking for tiger suplex ooh long two count there that is a I believe that uh, the setup is called a double chicken wing into a suplex looking for the tombstone likes to use that as a setup for the rainmaker does not hit it it's not a gets out of it big stiff European uppercut there really slamming into him Goes for it again. Okada trying to hit a pinning combination there, but it's not a escapes. But hit get eats the close eats the but but the drop kick. That's the move. It's a drop kick. Goes for the rainmaker. Sonata spinning him around. Goes for the guillotine. Gets hooked. Or gets uh. Get a Sonata Okada gets out of it, but has it in again. And this time, Okada almost escaping there, but Sonata manages to hook it in. Doesn't really have it in completely. Only has one leg hooked.
God, I'm not out of it yet. Puts a lot of pressure on the skull. But he's not getting the pressure on the spine. Sonata going to be looking to finish this. Does like to use a moon salt to see if he can hit it. Crash and burn. Okada gets out of the way. Is he going to be able to capitalize? Sonata's down. Starting to get back up. Both men starting to get back up. Sonata trying to do something. Okada avoiding it. Another big drop kick connects. Stop Sonata cold. Looking for the Rainmaker. Got the arm. Spin. Sonata avoids it. And goes for the guillotine again. Okada hits a German. Hangs on. Likes to use that as a setup. And hits the Rainmaker. One, two, and three. And Okada picks up a win. Much needed win for Okada. He did not want to go 0 and 2. Sonata still not doing too bad at 1 and 1. Seven more matches to go, so not doing bad at all. And he definitely took Okada to task. It was not an easy victory. All right, here's the main event. It's going to be Tanahashi going up against Togi Makabe. This ought to be interesting. I don't believe I've seen these two go up against each other before. No, I don't think so. I, don't, I think they were in opposite blocks last year's tournament.
right, so we got Toki Bay coming out right here. Another one of the kind of tough guy Smash Mouth style wrestlers of New Japan. Had some real wars with Ishii. Which we're going to see again later in the tournament. And here's Tanahashi. Kind of uh, similar to Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart put together. And uh, I'd say even more important to the New Japan than those two were to that one company. Those two together more or less kept that company afloat in the mid-90s. Tanahashi... pretty much saved New Japan in the early 2000s. There's a real slump in pro wrestling in Japan at that time and Tanahashi came along and really uh, grew the company back up. That He was throwing his air guitar to the audience. He's a, an air guitar aficionado. If you're not familiar with him, kind of a classic babyface, good guy. But, uh, starts getting irritated. He will definitely, uh, get a bit of an attitude with whoever he's in the ring with. He's not afraid to get a bit nasty if he needs to. So this ought to be an interesting match. Got, uh, more of a classic pro wrestling... bit um, more of a speedy high flyer heavyweight in Tanahashi Makabe very much that uh, strong style smash mouth wrestling Tanahashi getting a little bit rude I do not know if, well, what kind of history these two have I mean they've both been around for quite a while Makabe is definitely uh been in New Japan for quite some time and as I said I've only been watching for about a year so I don't know all the history of New Japan and feuds and stuff that have been had in the past so I don't know about these two's history if they have one but, uh, Tanahashi definitely showing that nasty streak that he definitely does have joint manipulation there getting Makabe down to the mat trying to keep control of the arm Makabe tries to throw him off but Tanahashi keeps control That's really what uh, Tanahashi is going to have to do, I think. He's going to have to play the, play to his strengths, definitely. He does not want to get into the, the big uh, battle of strikes with Makabe. That is not going to go well for him. Uh, 
But uh, Makabe, no slouch in any, uh, you know, in any area of pro wrestling. He's very well-rounded. He just prefers that beat him up, knock him down, slam him around, beat the crap out of each other, smash him out style. Strong style. As it's called in Japan. And Tanahashi into the guardrail. Makabe back in the ring. Might be looking for that sneaky count out win. On the other hand, he's given Tanahashi time to recover. He probably should have stayed on him. See, this is not what Tanahashi wants. He does not want to let Makabe get into that striking war. And Makabe grounding him with a nice headlock there. It's almost a grounded sleeper. Interesting variation. Maybe uh, a little bit of the old I'm not going to let you one-up me on the ground game either. I'm going to ground you and I'm going to torture you. <laughs> Into the ropes. Quite often we only see Makabe going up in singles competition against other guys like Ishii and Hanma, others that like that smash mouth strong style. It's interesting seeing him go up against somebody with a different style. See him uh, pull out some of the wrestling that he doesn't do all that often. Got control of the arm himself at this point. Taking Tanahashi down, who immediately gets on the rope. Tanahashi is coming back from a, I believe, a shoulder injury. He's going to want to avoid taking damage to the arm like that. I don't think Makabe is going to give him any choice in the matter. Makabe A little bit of surprise there. And returning the favor. Since Tanahashi reeling. Off the rope, flying forearm. See, in a Tanahashi, you'll also see some touches of Eddie Guerrero, Chris Jericho in there. Flipping Centon. Yep. Likes to use uh, his own version of the the frog splash as a finisher. High fly flow, he calls it. Often uses it as a crossbody. Gets pretty good height on it. Not quite a Rob Van Dam five star frog splash area, but he gets pretty good height. Good impact. Makabe misses the clothesline. Tanahashi, a little bit of air guitar taunting there, and 
Uh, I couldn't quite tell how he connected there. That was a crossbody or a, a knee, forearm, maybe a little bit of all of them. Going to do a bit of the old tin punch himself. Makabe likes to do that. Gonna go up. And really laying those punches in. Into the corner. Hits the big clothesline. And Northern Lights with a bridge. A one, two, only two count. It's one of the things I like about Makabe. He'll just beat the crap out of somebody and then pull out a picture-perfect Northern Lights with a bridge like that. Ooh. Tanahashi caught him with the leg whip. He likes to use that to soften guys up. Goes after the legs. He will employ a variation on the Texas clover leaf. In kind of that similarity to Chris Jericho here and there, he likes to use a really high angled version of the Texas clover leaf. Makabe. It's like he connected with a clothesline. Tanahashi didn't go down. Tanahashi takes it again. Egging him on. Ooh, goes down that time. Hard. I knew we were in for a good match with these two. Wasn't sure how it would go down, what kind of style of match that they would work, but I knew it would be good, and it's not disappointed at all. Makabe, a bit faster getting to his feet. Shaking out the cobwebs, though. Gonna look to bring Makabe, uh, Tanahashi in the hard way. And... Tanahashi stopping him. Trying to take him to the outside a hard, hard way. into the forearm battle here across the ropes no less Tanahashi actually trying to use the ropes to give him some extra momentum but I don't think it really helped As Makabe is getting the better of him Tanahashi holding on not going down As a hold of the leg. Oh, Makabe stops him. He does like to do another variation on the leg whip across the ropes. Posting the leg down. Tanahashi rolls him over. And Makabe right up. Oh, gets caught. Dragon. No capture suplex. One, two, only two count. Capture German suplex. Looking for, probably was looking for the sling blade, but Makabe. Only a two count. Again, absolutely picture perfect German suplex with a bridge. Proper German suplex.
some of Tanahashi's many fans out in the audience. Urging the, their hero on. Both men getting to their feet. This time Tanahashi's a bit faster, but Makabe picks his moment and nails him in the back. Makabe likes to use a spider suplex. Tanahashi getting out of it. Like he might have just nailed him with a stiff slap there. Going up top, Makabe catches him. Uh, he's going to be looking to cinch himself in, and then German, or uh, well, it's belly to back off the top off the top there Tanahashi trying to fight out of it Makabe determined to make it happen but is he going to be able to and he hits it spider suplex Tanahashi takes the big knee Makabe gets the one two and three and Tanahashi goes zero and two So, uh, that's quite a development. Tanahashi, uh, who would have to, you know, going into the tournament, even coming off of an injury, would have to have expected to be one of the favorites to win as he won last year. But so far, 0-2. and two. Of course, seven more matches to go. He's definitely not lost by any stretch. He's going to always make up those losses, but... As far as momentum and confidence go, that's rough. Makabe, on the other hand, 2-0 and oh so far. Joining uh, Goto and Tenzan. At 2-0, and oh, Okada, Sonata, and Fale all 1-1. One and one. So the tournament's shaping up pretty to be pretty interesting this year so far. Quite a few interesting developments. Makabe going to get up a little bit of a speech here, but I'm going to go ahead and sign off, everybody. Thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed the commentary, and definitely keep watching NJPW even if you didn't. I know not everybody's going to enjoy my commentary, so take it or leave it. I hope you enjoyed it, but uh, plenty more to come from NJPW, and uh, before I close this out, I'll say uh, come check out my website, it's acidbathproductions.biz, or you can find me on YouTube under uh, the name Acidheads, A-C-I-D-H-E-D-Z, or Ryan Acidheads Murphy. Or, uh, I also do an e-fed on YouTube called AZW, using the old game No Mercy to run my own, uh, e-fed, essentially. I haven't uploaded lately, but there's quite a few interesting matches you might like on there. I also do games. You can find my games on Game Jolt under the name Acidheads. So that's all of my stuff I'm going to promote for myself. Makabe giving a little bit of a speech right there, flipping everybody off as he likes to do, and we'll sign off at that point. So thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.